here now. We are here to discuss the new uh, ceasefire proposal announced by uh, U.S. President Biden in an attempt to save his presidency. Yes. Basically. And, uh, you know, to consider, you know, where this is coming from. It seems like it's coming from all the protests. You know, the protests around the world are forcing the United States, you know, to back down on its support for Israel. Oh, well, good, good, good afternoon, Abraham. It's really a uh, pleasure to, to join you today. I think uh, I happen to agree with you. When I heard about the proposal, even though the, the show, that the, the broadcast I listened to, that was an excellent broadcast, I thought, and gave a lot of reasons why and how politically and militarily this um, proposal had its basis in what's really happening on the ground in Israel and in Palestine and in Gaza. Um, the, no, the, that show did not talk about the protests worldwide. And I do think the protests worldwide, as the, I think the um, current Ayatollah in Iran issued a statement Monday or Tuesday of this week, so thanking the students for their worldwide support for the struggle, especially students within the United States. Mm -hmm. So I, I agree with you. We have to give some acknowledgement to 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 the mass protests, and forcing Biden's hand to at least put something on the table, because he's clearly losing votes. Election, he's Michigan is up is no no longer a sure thing, yeah. and uh, and he's the United States is losing credibility by being tied to the hip to Israel. Yeah. So you know I think he was somewhat for I think they his form the, the State Department and the and the White House were forced to come up with something. Now what I've heard, I I can't back anything up. I I have no doubt, but I I have no facts to back this up. I mean, this is what from one show I listen to that these proposals supposedly or allegedly have been uh, accepted by uh, the Palestinian by the, the Palestinian resistance movement. I'm not sure if that's true. Yeah. No. Well, it's you know, uh, Al Jazeera says that Hamas views the uh, proposal positively. Yeah. Well. well I would say that this proposal is is uh, the same as Hamas's uh, yes. right. Hamas's exactly. proposal previously, except that they don't call for the full withdrawal of the of the Zionist military from Gaza. It calls for a permanent ceasefire, you know, in after uh, two three phases. But uh, this uh, Biden uh, proposal, which he calls an Israel proposal, <laughs> is uh, only calling for the withdrawal of uh, you know uh, the Zionist military forces to uh, uh, non-populated areas, presumably inside Gaza. So it's calling for the continued occupation of Gaza. And of course, the military forces, even though they may not be stationed in populated areas, which there are none in Gaza. First of all, uh, they could always move back, you know, to take out, you know, any population that they wanted to. So, to continue the military occupation of Gaza is not something that I think Hamas can agree to. But what Hamas can agree to, which is um, part of this proposal, is that Hamas would no longer be in charge of Gaza, and uh, Hamas actually um, agrees. Uh, to such a uh, political position, even though it's no business of the United States of America or of the Zionist state to determine what is going to be happening in Gaza and in Palestine. Nonetheless, <clears throat> Hamas has agreed to uh, uh, withdrawing its uh, total control over the government of uh, Gaza. And how? By forming a government of national reconciliation, which is what was proposed long ago. <laughs> And uh, is uh, to in include a, a government uh, with ministers from the various uh, resistance uh, tendencies, uh, including uh, Fatah, I would presume. So, if they can do it, you know, fine, you know. But it, I think it depends upon Fatah because Fatah is not willing to work with Hamas. 
usually. They want uh, total control. And I've, uh, I've experienced uh, this uh, personally in uh, my attempts uh, to work with Fatah. Very difficult to get Fatah to do anything. You know, they just sort of, you know, coast along, keep on doing the same thing as before. And the uh, current uh, recognition of the state of Palestine is not an achievement of uh, Fatah's party uh, diplomatic efforts. No, this came as a result of the, uh, the continued resistance of Hamas, which has demonstrated, demonstrated that Palestine cannot be defeated. And so it has become, and together with the international protests, these three countries, Norway, uh, Spain, and uh, what's the third country? Just came to recognize the state oh, of Palestine. I, I don't know the third country, but that's, that's fine. We, we, uh, we yeah. Fine. So, you know, the continued resistance of Hamas is, uh, is working. You know, the, it's demonstrating the will of the Palestinian people, the support of the Palestinian public for Hamas still, even under duress, and uh, and so Palestine is is making its way into history, you know, breaking through the apartheid wall that the Zionists have set up. And then there's the West Bank, where 80 people have already been killed since October the 7th in the repression that is taking place there. And uh, together with the, uh, the uprising in the West Bank, the intifada of the militant brigades of Janine and uh, Nablus, particularly in the Balada refugee camp, which is the first site which I was uh, doing solidarity work in 2003 when we went there as the uh, International Solidarity Movement to uh, remove the uh, the blockade uh, put uh, on the Market Street entering into the Balada refugee camp. And we dug away the, uh, the, the hill that was put there of earth and stones by a Zionist bulldozer to shut down the camp so that, you know, food could not enter into the camp at that time. And we defeated it at, in 2003. And now, you know, the same is happening here. In 2003, actually, I worked with um, Tom Herndl, who uh, later went to Rafa and was martyred there. And I remember saying to him, you're going to Rafa? And he said, yes. Boy. It's dangerous in Rafa, and he said, I know. That's, you know, the will of the Palestinians is so strong that it's infectious. You know, it becomes part of the people who are coming there to work in solidarity with the Palestinians. Right, 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 right. Would, would, would you mind if I share a couple uh, couple um, headlines with, with our viewers? Yes. Here, here's, here's one from um, Haretz. Says that Biden proposal was coordinated with Israel. U.S. fears backlash from Netanyahu's far right allies. Mm. That's on Haaretz this morning. Mm -hmm. This is what they're that's what they're talking about. Another one. I'm gonna take this one on. We'll stop share for a second. In short, show show you all another one. So, you know, it's cl it's clear that it was it was coordinated. It had to be coordinated with somebody. Because they're, they're not just gonna make a statement like that, because Daddy has the money, so Sonny has to be part of the, the conversations, you know. I mean, hmm. oh, uh, things kind of a some interesting situation here. And here's another um, headline from the Times of Times 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 of Israel. Hmm. Yeah, another one. Here we go. Non-starter Netanyahu said. There's no permanent cause of ceasefire to Hamas destroy it. Well, okay. Huh. Oh, really? So, so how, how does uh, Biden get away with calling this an Israel proposal? Because, because, well, well because Net either Netanyahu doesn't agree with it, but he's forced to listen, to, he's forced to listen to it, or yeah. he's just lying. Because he, he, he might be lying to support his, to save his base. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Well, wow. I, I I just want to show those who, those who headlines with with, with our, our viewers. Yeah, well, certainly the United States can can make this ceasefire proposal uh, an Israel policy position. They can force Israel to accept it. 
Maybe that's what Biden means, that he's willing to force Israel to accept such a proposal, in which case he would have some credibility, you know, because all he has to do is shut down the uh, the pipeline of bombs. And then, you know, Israel has to accept, you know, whatever, you know, because they'll be, you know, def you know without any defense. So Biden can can do it, yes. And Biden has to do it if he hopes to win the election. Right. Well, yeah. Right. I, I think that. Um, I, I think this is. Um, I find this a curious headline here. Actually, the if you look at the headline from um, Al Al Jazeera this morning, the one right now that we as as we speak. The 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 um. The proposal is, is isn't even on the front page. It's not. It's not even the major. It's not even the major news. Wow. Ninety five kills as Gaza reels. Ninety five kill as Gaza reels from attacks. Israel drone down over Lebanon. So, yeah. so they're, I think they're, they're they're staying on point with, with what's really going on. Yeah, know, which I appreciate. Yeah, but wow. I think. So I, I just thought we would just kind of give a little a little sliver yeah. of what the what the what the Israeli press and Al Jazeera is saying about this proposal. Yeah, well, that's the actuality. You know, the massacres are continuing day after day. You know, it doesn't day look like day. doesn't yeah. look like they're ready. You know, to conclude a ceasefire. They look good. So. They look good. They look good at all. Seems to me either. Yeah. Um, I mean, at least I mean, because if they were. They be cease firing. Yeah. I mean, that's, or step one, okay. Step one is this. We're ready to do step one. Yeah. So clearly, there's some, clearly there are some issues on the Israeli side regarding the the, re the rejection or the delay in um, carrying this out. Mm. Um, mm. Uh, I was president of protest yesterday around mm. two thousand people. On the west coast of the United States, um, mostly racial, mo mostly um, many people from the from um, the school, from what we call the, the Mid East, uh, flags from Palestine in Palestine and um, we see it from Palestine, Ireland, and from New Caledonia were present. Um, the march march down the main streets. Um, very good speakers, um, very good um, turnout at, at, at four thirty in the afternoon after work in a in, in a major U.S. city. Uh -huh. so, and, I, and I know that there'll be more protests today, also. Uh -huh. Huh. Well, uh, you know, uh, there's you know been a breakthrough here in Montreal, Quebec. Because the University de Quebec at Montréal, which was my university when I was doing my PhD in the Department of Political Science there, the University Administrative Council has voted unanimously to endorse the protest demands of the student encampment on the campus there. So, the you know the student encampment has totally won, and uh, they will uh, be this. Uh, rejecting any sort of, you know, projects, you know, with uh, a Zionist university, even though the Zionist universities are supposed to be the most progressive part of the Israeli uh, civil society, nonetheless, right. nonetheless, they're, they're Zionist institutions, you know, they still operate as such. And you cannot get a teaching position there unless you are uh, pro-Zionist, basically. So, and even the Hebrew University in Jerusalem is built upon uh, stolen land. So, uh, you know, there's no no qualms there about um, boycotting the academic institutions uh, in the Zionist state, particularly because they've remained silent in the face of the universities in Gaza being utterly destroyed. All the libraries, all the um, archaeological archives, as well of the Canaanite period, all that destroyed. Incredible. You know, this is like the uh, the Roman occupation in Egypt when they burned the library at Alexandria. 
really it, pathetic. It, it, there are yeah, there are many things about this. Um, there's a story. Um, I don't know if you heard about it. A a, a Muslim woman, I think she's Palestinian in the New York, was it nurse? Have you have, 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 have heard about the story? No. We don't, let us talk about it. So there's a Muslim woman from New York. She's a nurse. And she received an award for helping um, mothers who are struggling with maybe violence or homelessness or poverty uh, achieve, um, help them birth their children, et cetera, as a, as a, as a support, support, member of a support community. And she was given an award by NYU where she worked. During her speech, she mentioned her death, a perception speech. She mentioned that, you know, I'm, I really feel for the women in my, in my homeland who are, who are um, experiencing a, a genocide right now. And I want us to remember them as as we did our, our work here. She, and, she, and, she, and she was fired the next day. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. Wow. So, yeah. And I did not, I read that, um, uh, read that she had, had the, 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 the administration of the hospital had, had been after her because some of her, there was some situation in the hospital where she had talked to her colleagues about her, her views in the situation. And they I, her, just sharing her views got, got her in some hot, hot water. Um, what, what, I'm playing, what I'm making is that um, there seems to be some very bitter, some very um, tact for, I mean, tit for tat struggle going on um, here in this country regarding uh the god regarding regarding even speaking out it's it's becoming quite quite difficult to even say anything mm -hmm. uh, and um this this is an example of um i'm sure the headline right here this is an example here of what's uh you know this with the students being beaten in in los angeles and across the country uh and only one person been has been arrested um this young boy 18 year old boy here, here's a Here's the headline right here from the from the New York Times. Uh -huh. NYU nurses fired after calling the God of the World genocide in speech. Yeah. So we got we have to find ways to defer, to expose this stuff and also give the give these victims of this authoritarian regime in the United States some support uh -huh. because we have to know that people have their back and the union should be demanding demanding her that she be reinstated. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is an example of something that's, that's a, yeah. a breach of contract. I mean, the union could go on strike. <laughs> well, that's if, not legal. If, if, uh, yeah, I don't think so either. Um, if, if, she, if she's covered by a contract, I'm not even sure that she has a, she has a, a contract, but, hmm. um. Cases like this have to be supported by a broad mass of people. Mm -hmm. That's why I want to share it to our share with our viewers and take a look at that article. It's mm -hmm. it's it's in your, it, it's 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 in all the major papers, New York Times, uh -huh. LA Times, Washington Post. They, they they all have the story with different different angles to it. But mm -hmm. you know we have these kind of situations occurring, and um. I just find it. I find it telling that the United States is beginning to lose some of its allure internationally because of its support for Israel. <laughs> but then we have to highlight these cases also um, to help it lose, help people around the world and around the country see what, what's really occurring. And you also have a strike uh, by by U U U UAW. Uh, grad students in Santa Cruz and in UC uh, U U UCLA and at UC Davis, some of the major campuses, and they're having uh, they're picketing because of the harassment and, and brutality 
the police made it gave to the students on April April thirtieth, May first in uh, in uh, in L A. Mm -hmm. So we also had that also to have that happening. And then I read that the that that use that that I read that UCLA is calling in the students for hearings now, the ones who were who were arrested. Mm -hmm. So they want to start. They're going to start academic hearings against them. So that this 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 campaign of um of harassment is and um, persecution is you know is uh, is ongoing. It hasn't mm -hmm. stopped. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. It's it's right here. I, I'll list, I'm gonna share this with the viewers right now. So they can see it for themselves. Here we go. Well, there's going to be consequences, like uh, the poll that I saw conducted of the. Uh... Arab Americans stated that 25% of the Arab Americans are supporting Dr. Jill Stein of the Green Party as a candidate for the presidency. 23% are supporting Dr. Cornell West. And like 3% are supporting Biden and 2%, you know, for Trump. So if that's an indication of the, uh, the tendency to come, wow, that's revolutionary. You well, I, I think in response to the he had UCLA call student hearings for arrested participants, arrested participants. So everyone who was arrested is 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 being persecuted by the campus. And one of the ways that they, they will fight back is on is on election day. But and again, we we need to support these students in some way. Yeah. No way students hearings. Students, that means hearings in which students are are to be Charged. subjected to accusations and by, possible uh, by, penalties by by, by by university so by the administration. Arrested, yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh. participating in the Palestine solidarity encampment have been called for student hearings by uh -huh. the Office of Student Conduct. Yeah, uh -huh. right. yes. Well, that's gonna that's gonna uh, that's going to have uh, consequences, you know, because once you give those students, you know, a chance to speak out, <laughs> well, you know, like they're not going to stop. You know, this well, is uh, well, this is going to uh, rebound upon the administration. There, they're not going to be able to get away with something like this. Well, so far they, so far they, this clearly this is the this is the the daily paper of of the campus dated today, Saturday, uh -huh. so something's on. Something is on is 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 planned. Arrested. Is These are arrested students. Students are charged under the city law. Wow, for what yeah. trespassing? <laughs> they were really? charged with consp conspiracy to commit theft. Theft. Theft of what? Grass. <laughs> I, I really? don't know. We need. We need to get. I mean, from this story here, we need to get deeper in and in, into these stories. Yeah. And talk to people. I just want to share some of the headline. I mentioned last week. I want to start doing that. The viewers need who may be around the country, or around the world, need to see what we're talking about is legitimate. We're not making yeah. these things up. Yeah, no. yeah. Up all. This, this is right here in Los Angeles, California, at one one of the United States' most prestigious public schools, not private schools, public schools, and they're mm -hmm. going to they want to charge the students with yeah. students. Conduct violations for exercising free speech. Yeah, well, well, that's what that's what's going on. So these I, these uh, this harassment by the administrations of the various universities is so blatantly illogical and illegal that yes. I think that it's raising the demand again, like in the sixties, for student faculty staff control of the universities down with the administration. You know, the, those people they're not even you know well educated. You know, one guy. Who was in charge of the uh, uh, academic committee at uh, at the university here in Montreal during my my fight over the uh, doctoral thesis? He only had an MBA, and he was in charge of the academic uh, studies to committee, which determined you know which uh, doctoral theses would get passed or not. And he decided using what they call the preventive clause of the university administration uh, regulations that he wouldn't grant my thesis accreditation, you know, wouldn't allow it to have a defense hearing at which it could be voted upon to be adopted as a legitimate 
a doctoral thesis and awarding me the accreditation of being doctor of political science. So this guy, you know, organized a committee meeting, didn't invite the, uh, the, the my thesis director, no, only invited, you know, uh, a couple of members of the jury, you know, that were hostile to my thesis for political reasons. And then they decided that they were going to reject the thesis. And this came out in a trial when I questioned um, Dr. Sami Aoun, who was a member of the Privy Council of the Conservative Government at the time. And, uh, you know, I, you know, like the secret meeting of this committee, you know, suddenly revealed, you know, in his testimony. And so the judge naturally, you know, thought that this was illegal. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and that's how my uh, defense was granted and how I won my defense. And that's how I won my case against the university administration. And this is, you know, something that they think, thought that they could get away with and they didn't. And now the administrations think that they can get away with prosecuting students for protesting on campus, as students, no way, they can't get away with that. This is going to break down the whole authority structure of, of the universities as they're set up in the US. This is some student faculty staff control. It's coming down the tube. Right, right. Well, we, we have to fight for this. We have to fight for this because this also is what puts pressure on the government, on Biden, on the state governments, on the on the local on the local governments and on and on campus campus governments. We have to fight. So mm -hmm. you know, I. I I'm, I'm going to make some efforts this week to find more about this particular article. Uh, reach out to my contacts and see what we can share with our viewers and listeners uh, next week. Yes, and uh, I think we we should again uh, make an appeal to the viewers that uh, they should be sharing this video analysis uh, in, in all uh, platforms that they can, that they have of their own, and... Uh, promote this uh, discussion because this discussion is essential and it's not taking place elsewhere because uh, we're not afraid to discuss politics here, you know? No, <laughs> Basically, no. that's what it is, you know? We're, we know what we're talking about and we've got the experience to back it up. Right, and also we, 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 we do this because we feel it's important to get uh, the truth and a... And a political analysis based on the working history of of um of Abraham with uh with the Jewish boom movement mm -hmm. uh, they have a lot to share a lot to a lot of insight they can provide and I think it's crucial that voices like like um like like Abraham's be heard mm. you know the Jewish Bund is coming back in in terms of its um uh attributes, its elements. For instance, in the United States, <clears throat> there's a coalition, uh, if not now, not in our name, and a Jewish Voice for Peace, uh, a local, and a local group of Jewish Voice, no, uh, yeah, a local group of Jewish Voice for Peace, and uh, sponsored by, if not now, as a, as a movement, uh, <clears throat> in, in which uh, they're supporting um, Cori Bush, Cory Bush's wow. candidacy and presumably uh, other alternative progressive candidates. So they're taking a step into, you know, doing political uh, activities that is not part of the protest movement. This goes beyond that. And they're now becoming a political movement, a Jewish political movement, much like the Jewish Bund was, you know, before the Holocaust. So you know, I don't know if they know what they're doing, but they are certainly following in the footsteps of the Jewish Bund. Uh, but so many of the uh, protesters, you know, these young student protesters, particularly the Jewish ones, don't know that what they're doing, you know, was done long ago, you know, like since 1897, the Jewish Bund was there opposing Zionism because of its reactionary elements. And uh, and and now they're beginning to do much the same. In, you know, in Paris as well, there was a conference in which uh, there was a United Front uh, presented uh, as well there. Uh, a, a, a Jewish uh, anti-Zionist front uh, that has been established there as well, in which they make references um, to the uh, principle of uh, Jewish existence and Jewish identity being rooted in the countries, in the homelands in which Jewish people are living. And uh, this is called Dorkite, or here -ness. 
and uh, and the speaker Bronstein was speaking on behalf of the Arab Jewish population, which have a similar term that she mentioned that I forget right now in Arabic, and saying that they are part of the societies in which they are living, and they are as legitimately uh, 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 Algerians or or Tunisians or Moroccans or Americans or Canadians, you know, as much as anybody else can call themselves that, but they are also Jewish, and they are not Jewish um, in support of, uh, of Zionism, because Zionism is not supporting the existing Jewish population, a majority of which does not even live in that Zionist state, but lives elsewhere in their own homelands. And this is becoming conscious, and, uh, uh, and it's becoming linked into the protest movement against Zionism and the war in Gaza, the genocide in Gaza by these Jewish movements. So I'm very uh, pleased, you know, to report that there is an increasing sort of political development of the Jewish protest movement to become more and more like the Jewish Bund uh, before the Holocaust. Whether or not, you know, they're conscious of what they are doing, nonetheless, this is what's happening. And uh, with a study of the Jewish Bund, I think that the Jewish protest movement, the young Jewish protest movement, the student protest movement, can learn a lot on how to advance quickly to defeat Zionism as an ideology, as a movement, and as a collection of its various political parties, because we need to form our own movement inside the Jewish community that can assume the proper leadership and spokes and be spokespersons for the Jewish community and replace the Zionist the dictatorship that has taken control over the uh, Jewish communities, both economically and politically. This is what's developing, I think, now. I wish I could get back to the to the Jewish Bund vigil at the Jewish community campus here in Montreal, but I st I'm, I'm still sort of, you know, um, training to be able to walk again. But uh, I, I, I will be back there as soon as possible. Uh, and I don't think that this proposal from Biden is going to end the war. So I expect that the protests are going to have to continue. But the proposal, the ceasefire proposal from Biden, indicates the pressure of the protest movement internationally. And when it continues, it will be successful. That's what this proposal from Biden means. And uh, I think Hamas can probably pressure uh, um, the uh, the uh, Zionist state into a, a complete withdrawal because their campaign is turning into a disaster for themselves and not only the Palestinian people. They're losing soldiers that they can't admit to losing because it would destroy their credibility in the Israel uh, public opinion. And so they keep it quiet. But, you know, they can't keep it quiet for long. And uh, I look forward to uh, that whole... Uh, political administration being exposed as uh, as merely a, a colonial project that has nothing to do with Jewish security. And they're not there to defend Jewish people and the Jewish people as a whole. And they are not being allowed to speak in the name of the Jewish people anymore. As, as this as protest movement is now coming to realize that they have to assume the responsibility of speaking on behalf of the Jewish people in opposition to the Zionist parties. This is becoming a, a conscious element of the pro Jewish protests as well. So I'm, I'm very pleased with the development of this uh, a young movement and look forward to its maturing and developing uh, a, a Bundist identity as well as uh, an, a protest uh, as an individual. It has to become a movement of Jewish students and uh, uh, oppositionists uh, united in the various generations to speak out in the name of the Jewish people against the Zionist movement as such and refuse to accept that the Zionist movement is going to lead and speak on behalf of the Jewish people anymore. This is end, ended, the end of the Zionist movement as far as the Jewish people are concerned. Not as far as, you know, the Christian Zionists are concerned, but that's no consequence. As long as the Jewish people are conscious of themselves as being Jewish and not Zionists, that that is the most important element that the Bund, the Jewish Bund, is seeking uh, and will achieve, uh, and uh, together with the uh, younger generation of protesters that are doing everything, everything that needs to be done right now.
they're really sort of uh, really you know marvelous and uh, and in, in terms of you know the various movements uh, that are that are existing from uh, Jewish Voice for Peace, which is you know now middle aged middle movement. Uh, and it's been around for quite a while, and if not now, the younger students uh, as well they should all be looking into the um, what the tradition of the Jewish Bund, you know, provided in terms of opposition to Zionism, and in <clears throat> the more recent works of the Manual of Revolution, which is available on academia.edu, and contains the writings of the young uh, Bundists in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, who were martyred on on May. 27th of uh, 2019. So the Jewish Bund contribution is uh, is becoming deeper and is be, and is now renewed and, and uh, is available in the writings of, of the comrades uh, of uh, Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, <clears throat> we want to be able to publish, publish them as, uh, as printed works, but the uh, initial publisher for book number one has been uh, bought up by another publisher who was supposed to be working on the project. And uh, the second book, uh, another few hundred pages of the immense writings of the comrades is going to become available even if we have to self-publish. And uh, this will take some time because we're very busy with uh, the protest movement right now. And uh, it, it, Gaza takes precedence. But uh, we've got all the apparatus there, and we've got the writings and the thoughts and the ideas and the program of the Jewish Bund ready and waiting to serve the Jewish protest movement and the protest movement in general, which is obviously having beneficial effects upon the Biden administration and will have its effects upon the Israeli uh, civil society as well when they realize how isolated they are becoming. They don't know, you know, that they've become so isolated. They really sort of do live in a bubble there, 